I'm back, and you're watching the World News. I'm Randall Jamins. On top of the stories, a parade was held in MR Boulevard in downtown Dubai on Sunday to celebrate the 41st National Day of the United Arab Emirates. Government workers, students, and other Dubai residents participated in the parade. As was expected, there was a lot of flag waving and joyous celebration in the name of the country. In the procession, a shining SUV decorated with 57,000 UAE dirham coins made an impression with crowds along the boulevard. On the National Day, UAE residents hold parades and celebrations, which usually start in the afternoon and last until the wee hours. The first Beijing International Magic Carnival concluded on Sunday after three days of magic and mystery. The carnival, which started on Friday, will become a biennial event in Beijing. On Saturday afternoon, 20 top magicians from 10 countries around the world stage performances in two categories, close-up and stage magic. The Argentine magician Henry Evans won the gold prize for the close-up magic competition. The German team SOS and Victoria Petroshan won the stage magic competition. Zhang Guzhou and Bond Lee from Hong Kong won the bronze awards for the close-up magic and stage magic, respectively. The carnival featured not only magic performances, but also forums on magic and competition. Going at the auction now, a rare letter written by French Emperor Napoleon giving orders to blow up the Kremlin in Moscow surprised experts on Sunday by taking 194,580 US dollars at an auction outside Paris. The sum was 10 times the initial estimate as the explosive content of the letter sparked a bidding war between French and Russian collectors at the sale a stone's throw from one of Napoleon's residences at Fontablu Castle. Written in code and dated October 20, 1812, the spidery missive reads as a series of figures signed hastily from Knapp. Manuscript expert Alain Nicolas explained the significance of the letter. The sum was the largest ever paid for one of the emperor's letters from Russia. Buenos Aires fabled Avenida de Mayo was transformed on Saturday night into an outdoor tango ballroom as hundreds turn out for the Grand Milonga Tango Festival. Tango enthusiasts from across Argentina and around the world gathered for the festival in central Buenos Aires. Tango, both the dance style and the music, are synonymous with Argentina. So much so that UNESCO included the activity as part of cultural world heritage list for 2009. Argentines are notoriously proud of the iconic dance, and those who turned out on Saturday for the festival were no exception. The city's culture ministry has organized the Great National Milonga, a series of stage performances annually for the past several years. Tango dancers hope that Festival Suku as the Great National Milonga will uh, inspire people to learn how to dance tango and pass on the tradition to younger generations. Meanwhile, a polar explorer who famously retraced Douglas Mawson's Antarctic trek launched an ambitious new challenge Sunday, recreating Ernest Shackleton's perilous crossing of the Southern Ocean. Tim Jarvis, renowned British-Australia adventurer who, in 2007, reenacted Mawson's 1912 odyssey across the frozen continent, is planning a similar trip in 2013 to follow Shackleton's dramatic 1916 voyage. Jarvis described the perilous 800 nautical mile southern ocean crossing in a Spartan lifeboat and punishing traverse of South Georgia Island with very basic gear and rations as the biggest survival journey of them all. The adventurer and five other men made in across the hostile ocean with little more than the clothes on their back and the most basic of rations and battled across the rugged island to a whaling station to raise the alarm. Inspired, really, I think, because of who Shackleton was. I think he was a man ahead of his time. He was very compassionate, a great leader. He managed to motivate a very disparate group of men to pull together in the same direction to achieve 
you know, this impossible goal, really, of saving themselves from the Antarctic, and that's always inspired me. And finally, after heavy snowfall in the Alps and uh, Pyrenees, a number of ski resorts in France have opened early, prompting a rise in bookings ahead of the Christmas holidays. Most of the skiers saw the winter season as the most awaited time to snow and ride. For them, the weather is beautiful, the landscape is magnificent, and they're trying to get up to speed. One skier said it's extraordinary and reservations are quite good. As soon as there is snow, bookings increase and people reserve resorts to enjoy the nature and the snow events. Stay put, local news coming up next. Thanks and see you again next time.